Welcome back. My name is Keith Davis, and today we're going to cover a topic I've touched on before, but today I'm going to wrap it all into one package so you can see it all together and see how it all comes into play. I'm going to be talking about how Mercedes-Benz provides driver's assistance. We do not have the drive pilot here in North Carolina, so the car is not autonomous, as it were, but it is very close to it. And today I'm going to demonstrate how that works, as well as show you how I have preferred to set up my car to drive in the manner I prefer most comfortable. And with that, let me show you how I set it up. Let me show you how I have settings set up so the car can give me the maximum help as I'm driving to make life more convenient for me. You'll note we still have the Easter decorations set up on the car. Thank you very much for the graphic goodies. And we go to our settings. Under assistant, I'm going to let the car help me with nothing to do with the speed or the route because it will tend to slow me down around curves far slower than I really need to go. But I will set the active distance assistance to comfortable, hopefully giving me a larger cushion because I prefer to slow down slowly more gradually. I will turn on active steering assist, which is important. Active lane change assist, which again is important for how I like to drive. And under collision avoidance, I have everything turned on. Under assistance, it's going to give me traffic signs. Although right now they don't have that operational in North Carolina, at least not in Fayetteville. And I've got traffic light view, which is nice, and attention assist in case I start to get tired. Under the vehicle, under driving, I have sound experience turned off. I have the creep function turned off so that when I stop with the accelerator, the car slows down, and when it stops, it is done. So those are the basic features I have set to go in this car, and now I'm going to demonstrate how they all come together. All right, now that all the settings are in place, you simply hit the on button to start the cruise control. And you'll note I had a blank space that now has a white 55 there. I hit set, and now it's green. And it shows 61 because that's the current speed I'm going. And so at this point, the car is now firmly in control of my driving. My heads up display also shows me that the green is on, so the cruise control is in place. It wants me to hold the steering wheel. And we're set. So that's basically freeway driving. The car will tell you to hold the steering wheel for 45 seconds. It'll keep you in your lane. It'll let you change lanes. It'll keep you a good distance from the car in front of you. And literally, you could drive for hours like this because I have. And it's nice that you can just relax. It takes a lot of stress out of your driving. So it's freeway speeds. This car essentially drives more than you do, and it's a wonderful thing. And here we are in the city driving. The car is now driving for me. The car is stopping for me. And as you can see, it gets a little closer than I prefer before it applies full brakes. But the car did all of that for me. It will not do it if I'm the first car at the red light. So because I've been here too long, I'm going to tap the gas. And the car is now taking off. I'm sorry, I'm not touching the accelerator. I'm not touching the brakes. I'm not touching the steering wheel, except through intersections. The car does not want you to let it alone when you go into an intersection. But I'm letting the car do all this for me. So there we go. The car is now stopping for me, keeping a good distance of the car in front of me. And now we're taking off again. So in the right circumstances, the car can do most of your driving. And that's it. The car is now driving. And after I get the settings set, it's just my job to monitor about every 45 seconds, hold on to the wheel. I hope this is helpful in understanding how to set up and employ your automated driving. Make it a great day.